you're listening to the Academy podcast, a podcast for people who can but don't know how. This is where you get actionable steps to turn vague dreams into blissful realities. And I'm your host, Omoshala Victoria Wallaby. So let's get started. Are you at the verge of quitting your online business? Wait, wait, wait. Before you do that, hear this. If you have been struggling to attract clients, I totally understand how that must feel. I was also at the verge of quitting as well because I just felt everything I was doing was making no sense, attracting no clients, and I was so broke and such in a state of despair. But fortunately, I cracked the code. I got the code and I'm about to hand it to you for free. So if you've been struggling to attract clients into your business and you're just at the verge of giving it all up, try this first. Head on over to learn.icandemy.org where I share with you how to make your first $10,000 online as a brand new coach, even if you have no social media following, yes, no huge email list and no raving testimonials yet. Head on over to see how you can create a powerful system that works to attract clients and leads for you on demand. Head on over to learn .icandemy.org to get started. Hello, 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 and welcome back to another episode of the Academy podcast. Super excited to be here. I'm delighted that you're on here today. Thank you so much for tuning in as always every single week. Now, this particular episode is jam-packed with a lot of nuggets for you, actionable steps that you can actually implement in your life and business to move you forward. That is what we're all about on this episode. So as you all know, I have been promoting my latest program, Mogul Mindset Program. Mogul Mindset Course or Program is a five-step comprehensive system that takes you from vague to blissful reality. It's a five-step system whereby we go from mindset, we address the mindset of a mogul, we look at opportunities, we look at growth, we look at unlocking miracles, and we don't stop until we get to liberty, right? We get liberated to be who we have been called to be. And one of the responses that I got back, uh, the feedback that I kept getting from people who were genuinely interested in this program is, I cannot afford this program. I really want it. I really want to do it, but I can't afford it. Or I have this big vision, or can I share my vision with you? This is what I want to do, but I don't see a way forward. I'm stuck. I don't have any money. And this is not just one person. I got a couple of similar stories like that. And that was why I had to dig back into my past, into the archives of my past to try and see. Because at one point in my life, I was like that as well. And I tried to look at, okay, how did I get to where I am today? What can I pull from my past to help these people move forward in their journey and in their life and their business? So definitely, so in, in essence, is how do you not just discover your purpose, but actually start to activate that purpose, right? And hence, this episode is being recorded. So stay with me. I have a really, really exciting episode for you today. So as I was thinking about it, many years ago, I've always known that I wanted to do something in communications. I wanted to be a communicator. I wanted to be something along those lines, right? Even in high school, I'll be the one to go represent my school on debates, right? I would, I've always been a communicator, so to speak. Or when I came back from holidays, I remember this vision so vividly. I would sit down in class and I would have my friends or my classmates sit around me in class and I'd be telling them stories about, you know, the movies I watched while I was on holiday, the experiences I brought back with me, places I visited, and they will be so captivated, right? I could literally see the joy in their eyes as I told the stories, right? And that way, that was a thread that weaved through my life. Now, even though I wasn't very certain on what I was going to become, I knew for a fact that it had something to do with communication, storytelling, somewhere along those lines, right? So in your life, there's a particular thread that weaves through everything that you do. That is your your North Star. It's taking you somewhere, right? So make, number one, make a note of that. So number two is once you've identified what that tiny little thread is, it's a thread that weaves into everything that you do, even in the bad times, right? Because I remember when I was really little, I think I was about 10 or nine, thereabout. 
we had this neighbor who came to report. So it, some, a friend came to our house and was talking to my mom, right, about somebody else, right? And I was there. I think I was maybe maybe seven, between seven and 10. I can't really remember the age to be exact, but I remember this situation because it landed me into deep trouble, right? So this person came to our house and was telling my mom about this other person, right, who happened to be a neighbor from the past. So I saw this other person one day and I just told them, Ah, Uncle Dis or Auntie Dis came to our house and this is what they were saying about you. <laughs> Thinking about it now is ridiculous, but that was what the seven-year-old or nine-year-old me did at the time. And then when I told the person, innocently, this lady came back, the, the lady obviously that I was talked about, confronted the person who talked about her and that person came back to my mom to say, look at what your daughter did. I landed in hot water that day. Like I got a whooping and I had to kneel down for hours, right? Because of my mouth. So you see that even in the bad times, what I'm trying to communicate to you is there is a tread. You may not be using that particular thing for good right now, but don't cast it away. There's a thread there. And that is how I, that is a thread that's always woven through my life, right? Obviously now I know better and I do better, okay? But what I'm trying to say in essence is, there's a thread that weaves through our lives that is connected and tied to our purpose. And then the vision is the vehicle that drives us towards that purpose. So in my case, I've always known myself to be a communicator of some sort. And that's the thread that has always woven. Now, after high school, I'd lost my dad in a car accident. Um, we literally went from grace to grass, right? So to speak, things were very difficult. We could even barely afford meals in my home at the time, not to talk of, you know, body lotion. It was really bad. But something that kept me alive, that kept me going was I knew that this was not going to be the end of me. I was young then. I was about 16, 17. Yeah. But I just knew that this whole thing going on was not going to be the end of me. Like there had to be something more. That, that vision I saw of myself had to come out one way or the other. So number one, what did I do? I started to write. I wrote down the vision. I made it plain. And that is what I want for you today if you're listening to this. Number one, don't look at your situation. Don't look at the circumstances as it is right now. Grab a pen and paper and start to write down the vision that you see. The, take a note of the thread that has weaved through your life and then look further than where you are now. But you are here, but I want you to raise your head up and look further than where, what you can see right now and write down what you see. Write down what you see. Write down the you that you've known yourself to be, even though it doesn't line up with what you can see right now. In my case, I've known myself to be a communicator, right? So I wrote down, I'm an editor of a magazine and I would write down articles, like I would say places to seep and be seen. I wasn't going anywhere, but I would write down places in my head. I would imagine places. I would imagine myself being the editor of a magazine. I would imagine myself being this powerful radio presenter and I would just write stuff down. So that is why I'm saying, write it down. It doesn't have to line up with what you're doing now, but just write it down. Just be free. Just write. Write the vision, make it plain. So that's step number one. Step number two, start where you are with what you have. So I'm 16 years old. There's no possibility at the time that I'll ever get into university because we just couldn't afford it. There was no possibility that I could go beyond, you know, what I saw. So what did I do? We were broke. We were broke. And I was just like, you know what? Even as a teenager, I couldn't afford to buy sanitary pads. And I was like, so my mom would say, okay, use a cloth. Like I would cut a piece of cloth and I'll use that whenever I was on my period we, because we couldn't afford to buy sanitary pads. That's how bad it was. That's how bad the situation was. So when I tell you being where you are, I'm not making up anything. I know exactly what it is to be there. So what did I do? I thought to myself one day, I'm 16 years old. I know how to speak. I can talk, I can engage with people, I'll go find a job. So the first place I went to look for a job was at a, at a crutch, was a, was a little crutch, and I, I applied to be a preschool teacher. Bad, bad, bad move. I, if there's one thing I know for a fact, I am not called to be a preschool teacher, okay? So, but I, I did anyway, that was my start point, because if I didn't do it, I wouldn't know that I was not called to do it. So sometimes we do things that 
confirmed to us that this is not where we're supposed to be. So I got the job as a preschool. It was my cousin and myself. We both got the job. She was phenomenal at it, but I sucked big time. I sucked big time at the job. And after a while, I didn't last very long there. I left. And then I got another job. As um, so in Nigeria at the time, they had this like because the mobile phones were just coming out at the time, so they were very expensive. So it became a business opportunity for those who could afford mobile phones to use them for business. For so people who didn't have mobile phones would come to like a mini phone booth to make phone calls. And I got a job as a person who would dial the numbers right for those people. So I'll sit there and I'll dial the numbers. It was a little mini like phone booth on the side of the road, actually. But I was happy. I was happier at that job than I was as a preschool teacher, right? I was happy. I was excited to be there. I was happy to welcome people and dial those numbers. That is another confirmation that my line was somewhere in communication. Even though teachers are communicators as well, it wasn't that form of communication, if you know what I mean. So I started there. It was very little money. I can't remember exactly how much I was being paid, but it was was just enough for me to maybe buy a body lotion, toothpaste, and sanitary pads, right, for myself. Okay, family, let's face it. We've all felt pain. We've suffered the losses. You know what it's like to want something so bad, but not see a part to its accomplishment. The question, however, is, do you know how to pick yourself up and move on despite what has happened? This is what I share with you inside of my new book, Good Medicine for the Crushed Spirit, a practical guide to helping you find purpose when adversity strikes. Inside this book, you will find personal stories, relatable biblical tales, and anecdotes that prove you are never alone in your despair. I will inspire you to turn pain, discomfort, disappointment, or setbacks into something positive that works for you. So if you're ready to change your life in meaningful and purposeful ways, get your copy of this book today and let the transformation begin. So that was it. But I was happy going there. I was excited to be there, right? I was happy interacting with people. So that was where I got started. Now from there, remember, write down the vision and start where you are. And when I mean start where you are, sometimes that involves you getting out of your current reality into somewhere else. In my case, I went and I looked for a job, right? I was like, I can't just sit like this. I can do something. And I went and I looked for a job. And that was where I got started. Now, from the job, I started to meet people, you know, even though the people that I met were not really like very instrumental to where I was going, it was just nice to have people to talk to, to see that there were more things happening out there in life, right? That was number two. And then, I had friends from high school actually because when I, the high school I went to was quite a uh, middle class between middle class and and on the upper end of society the the caliber of people that came there because at the time my dad put me in that school because he was still alive at the time and my mom really struggled did her best to make sure that I finished from that high school so I had I had a couple of friends who were not doing too badly who came from you know middle class or rich homes so when we were in that rut I had some of those friends around me I had some of those friends around me and even though they couldn't give me money One of my very good friends, we're still friends to this day. She was very supportive in terms of, oh, don't forget who you are, Shola, you can do this. There were times that she wouldn't even pack me food. She would pack me like food stuff from her home and I'll take that home. So I had that support in terms of my friends you know, just rallying around me. I had that support in terms of some of my aunties as well, right? So if it got so bad that maybe I really needed something I couldn't afford it, I would reach out. I never stayed quiet. I'll reach out to a friend that I trusted. I'll be like, you know what? It's really bad because I knew that there was certain, even if we were still very young at the time, we were only teenagers. But that is why when I see teenagers today, like, backbite and become so mean, I don't understand it really. Because in in my life, my friends as a teenager were very instrumental to me moving forward and not dying in the ruts that I thought I was in at the time. So number one, write the vision down. Number two, start where you are with what you have. Look around you. Look around your support system. Look around your network. Your network. Who can be that listening ear? They may not have money to give you, and that's fine. But you need those people that can say, you know what, you're better than this. You can do better. Go get a job. Don't give up. You know, those people that can speak life 
into your life. Very important. Number three, get out. Get out of where you are. You don't have to stay down. You don't have to stay there. Go find something. It doesn't matter what it is. I remember when I lived in South Africa, I worked as a career advisor, right? I had this student who had come in from Nigeria to study, right? When he came in, his mom was doing well and she was able at the time to afford his education. But as soon as he landed in South Africa, got enrolled, paid, I think, 50% of his fees, things went bad. His mom lost her business in a fire, right where she was living. Things literally went bad overnight. And this boy was stuck. He couldn't afford the fees for the next term. He had only done one term, one semester, and he couldn't afford the fees for the next semester. But you know why I respect this little boy so much? He's not a little boy anymore now, but a man now. He didn't feel sorry for himself. He was like, what can I do? What can I do? Immediately, he goes into Pretoria. The school was in Johannesburg in Midrand. He went to Pretoria. He found this Nigerian shops who sell like hair extensions, right? And it was like, I know on campus, there are a lot of girls who wear hair extensions. So please give me some. I'll go sell and I'll bring back the money. I don't know if he maybe pay them up front, to be honest, but he didn't have the money at the time. So these people would give him the hair extensions and he'll go sell them on campus. Remember, he couldn't even study anymore because he had been kicked out of school for not being able to pay his fees. But he would, you know, pay, uh, sell the hair. He would come back into campus and sell hair extensions there and go pay his suppliers back and make a little money for himself just to get by. And when that, when that was no longer working, oh, I think he was still doing that. And then the next thing he did was he, was he got a job as a waiter at the restaurant, right? So he got a job. And the thing with, do not despise the, day, the days of small beginnings, I tell you, do not. Because when he got a job as a waiter at the restaurant, that was where his help found him. As he was waiting at that job, right? As he was waiting at that job, Somebody came to dine in one day and they saw him like, oh, this, you know, young boy, you know, very well spoken. What are you doing here? And he just shared that, oh, I'm here to study from Nigeria, but things went bad for a while. So I'm just trying to see if I can work and get myself back into school. And this woman, this South African woman, God bless her soul. She said, really? OK, I, this is your last day on this job, by the way. I need you back in school and I'm going to pay. Like, who does that? This is not cheap school fees because I was his career advisor at the time. She contacted me. She's like, how much does this boy owe and what does he need to pay to get him back on track? I was like, wait, do angels still exist in the physical? Yes, they do. Yes, they do. But what am I trying to, what is the point I'm trying to drive out here? If this boy just sat and wallowed in self-pity to say, oh, I don't, this is my reality. I don't know what to do. and just got discouraged. He would never have met that lady who eventually put him back in school, started to pay his fees. She had her own children. She had her own husband. She had her own family, but she was able to still extend beyond her family to reach out to somebody else, right? But he was at the right place at the right time. He was waitering or he was a waiter rather, right? That was how he met her. So what I'm trying to say in essence is don't just feel discouraged. There's always a way out. There's always a way out. So don't just feel discouraged. And the power in writing down the vision is, it is not your job to know how the vision is going to come to pass. Your job is to just write it down. You writing down the vision is you agreeing with God that I fall in line with your will for me. Okay? So when you do that, it's not enough to just write down the vision. You need to get out. You need to start with where you are. In my case, I got a job and after a while, that job went away. But then I had this other friend who would say to me, oh, if only you can make it to England, you'll be able to find a job and go to school for yourself. She was prophesying into my life because she was studying in the UK at the time. Her parents could afford it. I couldn't. But she would look at me and say, oh, if only you could study in England, you know, if only you, because you'd be able to, if only you could get yourself to England, rather, you'd be able to work and maybe find a way to study. But how do you get to England now is the problem. You know, we were teenagers, but we would brainstorm things like that, right? And that was how we went until... I was between 16 and 19. So I did these jobs here and there, trying to survive. And when I turned 19, that was when I met my husband. That was when I met my husband. I, I had followed a friend of mine to the bank. She was going to withdraw some money. And I'd followed uh, her to the bank. And yeah, that was where I met him. If you want to hear the rest of how I met my husband's story, send me an email or go on my website. Go on hello, go on 
at www.academy.org. There will be a, a tool there where you can record a message and I'll get your message. And if you really want to know more about how I met my husband's story, let me know and I'll share that on the next episode. Okay. But for now, I just thought I should record this episode. How do you activate your vision? It starts with writing it down, starting with what you have, where you are. If you need to go find a job, it doesn't matter the kind of job it is. The beauty about life is you will, you will never stay there. It's not, it's not permanent. This is your life today, but it will not be your life forever. It won't be your life forever. If you dig into the mind of the stories of the great people that have gone before us, you will know that at some time, you'll see that at some point in their lives, they had to do some menial jobs. They had to do jobs that were beneath them, so to speak. Well, it's not the end of your life, really. It's not the end. So get out, get up, look for something to do. If you have to wash dishes in a restaurant, go wash the dishes. It may not be about the money or the dishes. It may be that you are being, your steps are being ordered into that place to meet somebody else, right? To meet somebody who will help you. Just like I just shared with you about my, my students when I was a career advisor at the, at, the, at the college in Johannesburg, right? It wasn't about waiting. It wasn't about the job. It was all that in there so that he could meet who was going to help him get back into school. So do not despise the days of small beginnings, okay? This episode is getting long, so I'm going to wrap it up here. Thank you so much for listening. And remember, keep on shining. Hey, hey, hope you're enjoying the episode so far. This episode is sponsored by our very own Mogul Mindset Training. Now, when you set out to be an entrepreneur, what you have just signed up for, even if you didn't know, is a class in personal growth and development. When I started my business, I did not realize that your mental health, your mindset, and your identity had direct correlation to how much money you made in your business. This is true. Now imagine for a moment that you plant a good seed in a soil that is depleted. No matter how good it is, that seed just won't grow. Why? Because it has not been put in the right environment for the nutrients it needs to thrive. That is the same thing when we try to run a business without getting our mindset in the right frame. Understanding what it is we're getting in for, that is why I have created Mogul Mindset specifically for coaches, course creators, and entrepreneurs who are venturing out into this wild, wild west of entrepreneurship and you just don't know what to do. Perhaps you've tried everything. You've tried the strategies. You've hired the coaches, the mentors, but it's not clicking. I can say it has to do with your mind. At least that is what I learned for myself. And this was a game changer for me. And that is what I want to share with you. So head on over to mogul.academy.org to watch the free training that I recorded for you. It's mogul.academy.org. And I cannot wait to see you on the other side. So there you have it. Thank you so much for listening. And for more content like this, follow us on our social media handles. On Facebook, it's at iCandemy, the Facebook page. On Instagram, it's at iCandemy. Or come say hello over on my personal page. On Instagram, it's at Omoshola Speaks. On Facebook, it's Victoria Wallaby. Feel free to reach out, introduce yourself, say hello. I love meeting you. And if you have any stories that you feel will inspire another woman to action. I want to hear from you. I really do. I love hearing from you. Send me an email to hello at icandemy.org. So it's hello at I-C-A-N-D-E-M-Y dot O-R-G.